And good morning. Welcome to Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7 WORX. Live every Saturday morning from the McDonald's on the Madison Hilltop. I am Jordan Bear here sitting in for Timmy T this morning who has got some softball related stuff that he's got to take care of. But that's okay because we are privileged to be joined by Madison baseball coach, Mr. Tim Armstrong. Coach, good morning. Good morning, Jordan. How are you, sir? Wonderful. Got a sunshiny day. Uh, today better weather so we're excited to be here you know we were just talking before we went on the air it seems like every year of the last several years mcit weekend it is always it just seems like the weather doesn't cooperate but you can't ask for better weather this weekend no it's great weather we've had a tough spring so far this year but uh probably in my almost 30 years of coaching uh it's been probably the roughest spring we've had but luckily it's uh, it's turned around now and we're we're ready to go all right and it has been and you've been coaching for a long time so talk about your background real quick and how long you've been coaching where you started and everything <laughs> I'll, we, I'll tell my age that way but okay uh, no i actually started at high school level in 1981 82 season under coach gary o'neill Hall of Fame coach, of course, uh, as JV coach hired in um, and was there for a couple of years. Then uh, I was fortunate enough in 1989-90 season to get my first head coaching job at Shaw High School. Uh, spent 12 years there and then um, got out of that. Um, actually, uh, and when Coach O'Neill retired in 2000, uh, three took over the Madison job was there five years and then uh, came back last year and you know you really everywhere you've been you've had a lot of great success uh, what do you attribute to all the success you've had all your years coaching surrounding yourself with good people good coaches uh, working hard uh, building a work at work ethic within the the players they see you work hard at it um, they're going to work hard, and that's what we try to instill. Even in our off-season workouts, six o'clock on Friday mornings, you know we're in, we're in working out uh, every day after school, and our coaches are dedicated. Some volunteer coaches, some not paid a lot of money, but a little bit of a stipend. But they're there, and the kids see that. So I think that draws into to what we do. Uh, you know, another thing, you know, you've had a couple of great accomplishments in your coaching career. Back in 2001, you took Shaw to the Final Four. Uh, winning the regional championship and great game fell to Triton sadly in the semifinal and then back in 2003 you won the Hoosier Hills Conference Championship with Madison which you and I both know in baseball is one of the tougher conferences you will find. Yeah Hoosier Hills obviously is is a very tough conference but it prepares us for games such as today I think it, it it's difficult and uh, you have to be on your top of the game every game in the conference games but you know it, it makes us be better it builds us uh, our concentration levels higher and prepares us for as I said games like today so we're excited to be in the championship game of the Farmers Bank Milton Madison Curry Invitational today against Austin and we'll go out and see what happens and uh, we'll talk about that game here in just a few moments talk about you know last year you came back uh, to Madison you know, had a little bit of an up and down year, but you could gradually see the improvements again and again with your team. Talk about the progression that your team's made over the last couple of years. Well, we were young. We're still, you know, young at, as far as experience goes this year, but uh, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, kids have worked hard uh, coming in last year. Uh, this group hasn't had or hadn't had a lot of success as far as wins and losses. Um, but we've we've worked extremely hard. I said in the off season. Uh, developed confidence in these guys. Uh, we started out 2-0 this year. We lost three straight, um, obviously, uh, uh, conference games, tough conference games. New Albany, we're down 4-1 to one going into the seventh inning, and they're now number two in the state. Columbus East, we go there and lose a 14-9 uh, to nine game. And the only the only issues with those games, they, they were good ball games, but, um, you know, strikeouts, we've, we've talked about those. Um, and you know even the Switzerland County game night before last you know we win that one uh, 13 to 4 but we had too many strikeouts in that game so we're really working on cutting down our strikeouts a little bit uh, last night we get Southwestern um, and and win that game so you know we're uh, back up above 500 right now, but uh, we got to continue to work. Well, and you mentioned, you know, the strikeout problems and what you're going to do today. You're going to face a very good pitcher, a very good Austin team. Austin has had a great program now for many years. Uh, Drew Burr, who um, I got to see earlier in the week, 
very, very good pitcher, has good breaking stuff, uh, has great speed. What do you tell your players going into a game like this? Well, we're going to be patient, you know, for the most part, patience. But we're going to, you know, we're going to look at that first pitch fastball and jump on it if we can. Uh, but there again, our biggest thing is not to be too anxious at the plate, which we have been. Good, good pitching. We've we've done fairly well. It's the pitching that's, uh, I say, mediocre or bad pitching. We struggle with at times because we're not patient. Uh, so that's that's something we'll go at. Uh, Matt, our coach Bays at Austin does a good job, really good job preparing his guys. So we're really happy to see them back in the tournament this year. Happy to have them back on our schedule because it's a quality program. It, it, it is. And, you know, the MCIT, uh, big thanks to Farmers Bank and Milton for sponsoring that this year. Um, talk about this tournament. It's uh, a huge tournament. It's kind of one of those things, though, it can really test a team because you see some, you see multiple teams in just a couple days. Yeah, I'd really like to see it grow again. You know, when it initially started years ago, we were at eight teams in the tournament, and then it dropped down to six. In the last few years, we've been four teams, and for obvious or various reasons, you know, some of the schools have proms this weekend. Uh, some of them have, like uh, Trimble and uh, Carroll County in Kentucky. They usually have their all a state you know tournament around this time and scheduling wise it's difficult i'd like to see it get back up to where it's a two weekend or at least a full you know the whole intention years ago when this tournament was developed was to get us ready for sectional to you know as a mid-season tournament to make it a real tournament atmosphere and play quality teams in this area uh, but it's dropped off a little bit as far as number of teams but we've still got some uh, great programs in the tournament and you know we we try to prepare that way and have a tournament atmosphere so we'll see how it works out what's your message going into the final today you know because the fact is whether it's a sectional or the mcit a championship is a championship everyone wants to win a trophy so what's your message to your team before you go into today's game well basically we just want to improve every game right now uh you know this will be our uh, seventh game of the year we just won our eighth game of the year actually in this part of the spring we've lost out a few games we've got a lot of games rescheduled and a lot of makeups that we're going to be playing five six you know games a week right now um, but we just want to go out prepare and get better every game however the game you know wins and losses that take care of itself we tell our kids every day that if we take care of what we're doing out on the field you know the wins and losses that take care of themselves coach we just talked about you know your team uh, how you get ready for big games like you have today in the MCIT Championship 1 p.m. here on Works 96.7 WORX. But um, one thing that, you know, to build a program, you know, because we, we just mentioned Austin a few minutes ago who has a great program, one of the big things that they've done is they build from the bottom up because that is how you build programs at this level. So what do you think really needs to be done to get participation up in this area? Because I just feel like it's not as up as it used to be. Well, we just get numbers. Kids uh, are doing there's so many other things to do now that uh, participation at the youth level has dropped a little bit in in our local parks program I think from from years and years ago uh, there's so many other things to do you know more sports to do uh, and things like that but one of the big things it's it's up and coming and has been for a while is is the travel ball well there's so many kids playing travel ball now that it, it's dropped off or kids don't play the parks programs as much anymore uh we're currently uh talking and 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 discussing the possibility of starting a friends of madison baseball program to get more kids involved in our in our program to to bring the interest um so you know and generate and and obviously winning winning breeds a lot of of that too brings interest out kids want to play uh, so we're you know we tell our kids every day at the ballpark you know you never know who's in the stands watching a little kid that that uh, you might make his day you know by by saying hi or playing a good game or you know anything like that but we also you know generating more interest in in this area from not only a baseball standpoint but economic development standpoint you know we for years coach O'Neill and coach Mike Modisett which incidentally is at the ballpark right now I, I was over there about 
10 after 8 getting some stuff ready uh, for this morning. Coach Mod's already on the baseball field getting ready. He does a tremendous job uh, with our facilities over there. But those guys, for years, we talked about uh, the possibility of trying to put in for the host the Indiana uh, High School Baseball Coaches Association North South All Star Series. So last year we thought, hey, we're going to put our hat in the ringer, and and we got with the the city, uh, the mayor's office, and and also the, our uh, visitor center, Tawana Thomas down there, and we met a couple times and and put a program together, and and Tawana and her staff did a fabulous job, did a, a flyover of our facility in Hanover College. College and got with Hanover College, Coach Stock and Lynn Hall, athletic director there, and we put a program or a proposal together for the North South All Star Series, and we were awarded for 2019, um, which incidentally um, it was hosted this past summer at Ball State University, and this year it will be in South Bend. So usually it's at major colleges around the state, uh, but. They saw our facility, saw what Hanover had. We thought we'd team up. It'd be a great recruiting opportunity for Hanover College. The, the All-Stars will be housed at the dorms there, and then we'll play the All-Star Series at the high school here. So, you know, we're very fortunate. We're going to bring more interest. We're going to get area coaches and teams involved, our youth programs involved in it, and we're going to make it a week-long event. And, you know, you just mentioned it there. First of all, Coach Montesette, you mentioned all the great work he does. That field, every time you go there, it is it is without a doubt the nicest field in the area. He's done a tremendous job taking care of that. Yeah, I'm uh, Joe Bronkella, the new athletic director at the high school, is doing a, a super job with us at, at getting us the things that we need. We've got a new entrance to the ballpark this year. Um, he's also contacted IHSA about uh, possibility hosting regional tournaments here, you know, because the facility like we have in this area, all the facilities we have, uh, we ought to be hosting more tournaments. I, I agree, and you know, the parking lot is perfect for uh, everything and you you've got a great facility and you are fortunate you get to host sectional this year correct yeah we do have sectional this year the you know the tough part of that is every team in our sectional is in the same conference the IAC so it, if it goes to the conference voting of who hosts it why not host it at one of your own conference schools and so we're kind of an outsider there but they know the facility that we have and uh, er everybody wants to play on a nice facility and we're doing continually doing up grades to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you mentioned that's coming up next summer. Um, you know, the opportunities for this program and really just to attract maybe some players from other schools that maybe you're thinking about transferring in, it could really make them think, hey, maybe I want to play there. A chance to really make the program even better and better. In a couple of years, you could be back to being the top of the Hoosier Hills Conference, possibly. Well, that's that's the goal. Is is we always want to be the best and and build the program because Coach O'Neill, for years, you know, being a Hall of Fame coach, did a fabulous job with his program. Was always you know 20 year or 21 season, and. Uh, you know, it, it's gone down a little bit, and a lot of that is interest and other things going on. But, but we're getting it back. Uh, we've got a group of kids this year that, that has said work extremely hard, and we just hope the dividends pay off for for them, so they have a good year to finish up on. Um, talk about some of the players on your team this year. How many seniors do you have on your team this year? That's six right now. We have uh, two that that haven't played high school baseball this year. Uh, Sam Heights and and Will Bruns came out this year because. They heard, I think, word of mouth from guys last year that that w things that we do, and it, it's all baseball related. But we have a good time while we work. We work hard, but we have fun. And they came out this year, and I think they're having a good good time, enjoying uh, what we do. Uh, they don't always see a, all the playing time because they're, you know, obviously you sit out a few years, you're going to lose a little bit. But both great athletes, really good athletes that are contributing. Uh, we also have. Um, uh, Connor Thurnell is a senior this year, uh, number one pitcher right now. He'll be throwing against Austin today, uh, hitting extremely well uh, this year. Um, he, he just does a good job, good kid, works extremely hard. Uh, we've got i got to look at my list. i got to put on my eyes here because, you know, <laughs> you get to be my age. But, no, we've got Zach Dean, another senior first baseman. 
that is a very good, very strong, powerful hitter for us. Uh, Jacob Nichols has been, a, I believe, a three-year starter behind the plate the last two years for me. Uh, does a nice job behind the plate. Uh, he's kind of deceiving at times. He doesn't have the strongest arm in the world, but he's got a quick release and and he's on target just about every throw. So does a nice job there. Um, and my last lone senior, where's he at? I can't leave one out. There's a lot. <laughs> well, and you know, you you have six seniors, and that's got to be huge for the young players on your team because right. I feel. You know, oh, go ahead. I just found it out. I, I, it's right here, my number one player on there, AJ Cars. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> wait a minute. It's early in the morning for me, but I got my roster here. Now, AJ has been a two year starter for me. He actually, as a, as a sophomore, uh, he was actually uh, named to the Hoosier Hill Conference all you know, all conference team. So, AJ uh, actually has transitioned this year from. Um, from the outfield, he was starting center fielder last year uh, to third base. Uh, we moved Cooper Cooper Yancey to center field and moved AJ to third base and does a great job uh, night before last or the Seymour game, I take it. Uh, two games ago, he's at third base, made a diving play, comes up to his knees, throws a kid out of first base. Uh, just fabulous major league play. Coach, let's talk about, in addition to today, We'll get to your second game today. Talk about the rest of your schedule and what you hope for the rest of the year and looking ahead for the rest of your games this year. Well, again, we just want to improve every game. Uh, get the ultimate goal is, is a sectional and the conference tournament for us. It'll be coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, we got a good draw so far in that. We think uh, we've got first round to be Jennings County at home. Um, then if we win that game, we'll play the winner of Columbus East, which is a very good program in Bedford this year. Um, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue to work. We've got a lot of ball games here coming up. I mean, I think we, when we counted, we had like 18 games in 15 days coming up. So we're going to be playing a lot of baseball because of the weather. But we go out and we throw it on the field. We've got some arms uh, coming back. We've got some strength in those arms. So we just got to stay healthy and, and continue to get better. And, and, you know, you mentioned it there because, I mean, staying healthy, that's a huge part of it right there, no matter um, what sport it is. And, you know, you look ahead to the sectional. You and I talked about that sectional, the, EA, the EIAC, uh, kind of near that all schools in that area. Do you see the sec a sectional title as a strong possibility this year? Yeah, Russ? I really do. I think that we can compete, especially with the strength of strength of schedule that we have in the Hoosier Hills Conference and even our non-conference schedule. I think we've got a, a really good shot at that this year. Um, you know, we'll we'll see more here later because we do have South Dearborn on our schedule for doubleheader. We're playing Batesville and Greensburg this year, uh, first time in a couple of years. So, and they're in that in that sectional. So we'll see where we stand then and you know the when you t when you talk to players you look ahead you have you know some strong teams there what do you tell your 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 kids when you go up against a new albany a jeffersonville because you know that they're one of the top teams in the state what do you tell your kids before a game like that we're just going to do what we do we're going to take care of what we do we can't control uh things that other teams do i mean as far as uh, how they play, uh, but we can control what we do. We're, we're going to be ready for every situation. If it's a bunt situation, first and third situation, if it's um, you know something that we can control, we're going to be ready for. How you know, how important are you know just basic fundamentals at this level? Because I've I've always told people at at no matter what level, just making basic plays will take care of over fifty percent of the work. Fundamentals is is it's all about uh, because the tremendous or fantastic play very seldom will win or lose games. It's going to be your fundamental plays that make the difference in a ball game. So we work fundamentals uh, every day. If it's fielding, if it's hitting, you know, uh, some players at, at a younger age, once they get up to, you know, junior high, high school level and you put a batting tee in front of them, they look at you like, you know, I don't play t-ball anymore. Well, you know what? Major leaguers still hit off batting tees. So we do we do a lot of tee work. We do a lot of soft toss work um, because fundamental baseball is it. You know, our uh, Coach Mahoney and Coach Jenner and Coach Whitaker, we were all at the uh, state high school clinic this year and and got some new drills. And that's part of part of coaching. You're always 
uh, taking drills from other programs. They may may be called the same thing. They may be uh, worked a little bit different than yours, but you're always looking for new things, more exciting things, more challenging things for the guys to get better. And we found some new drills this year, especially off Ohio State's uh, program, and we've implemented them to the program, and I think it's helped out tremendously. Want to talk about uh, the rest of your roster and also your assistant coaches because uh, I know every every single person is just as important because without them the team's not complete. Well, no doubt, and you know we mentioned the seniors except I I left off AJ earlier for a minute because <laughs> I I couldn't find him on the on the list here. But uh, no, going on down through the roster, we've got four freshmen this year, and you know it, it's it's I'm going to say it's not unusual but it is in certain in years past um, it's unusual for have a lot of freshmen a lot of sophomores especially starting at the varsity level in our conference and but we've got some tremendous athletes coming up through the through the program we got four freshmen this year that are on the roster Zach Forner uh, is actually starting in right field first base and he actually threw night four last a little bit um, is on there Parker Wilson um, his his uncle actually Sean Gatewood played for me at Shaw uh, in the early 90s, uh, was a tremendous catcher. Uh, Parker moved back here from the Floyd County area last year. He's back with us. Trenton Barnes. Uh, Trenton's going to be a tremendous outfielder for us. Uh, another freshman, and then Luke McCarty. Uh, uh, freshman catcher that uh, is going to be good. Um, we have uh, sophomores. Uh, we have five sophomores, Evan Chisholm. Uh, Evan is at shortstop uh, his second year. He ended up coming in about six games into the season last year, put him as a starter, and we said we're going to watch it and see what happens. And Evan, Evan's done a tremendous job, a uh, very competitive young man. Mason Welsh, of course, Mason plays has played varsity basketball two years. And also, he's been starter on the baseball team for two years. Last year, he's at third base, pretty much as a mainstay. He's moved over to second this year uh, with A.J. playing third base. Reese Wicker. Uh, Reese is, uh, plays JV and varsity, splits time there. Another middle infielder we have, uh, Dalton Owen. Uh, he's a, a, an infielder slash pitcher for us that is going to be up and coming, throws the ball. Doesn't throw extremely hard right now, but he throws strikes and very consistent at that. Then we got Quentin Humes. Quentin uh, is a is a tremendous hitter uh, for a sophomore and also plays third base. So we're trying to get guys again to to fill in when we lose people. Obviously, uh, our juniors Hunter Ferris. Hunter threw a uh, game last night against uh, Switzerland County. Threw a tremendous ball game. Had 14 strikeouts, I believe. Actually had a double off the left field fence. Also, uh, he pitched Legion uh, last year for us. Did a nice job. Uh, has an extremely strong arm. Also plays the outfield. Um, Quentin Ferris. Quentin uh, is a first-year baseball player. Um, he's, he's a football player uh, and, and does a great job there. He came out baseball this year, very raw but very athletic. So he's playing both ways, varsity and JV right now uh, as a third baseman, a really strong kid. Uh, Cooper Yancey. Cooper, again, uh, was uh, an infielder two years ago, we decided his arm strength, he wouldn't just wouldn't let it go from shortstop, wouldn't let it fly. I think he's afraid overthrows, but put him in the outfield and he's got a tremendously strong arm, good speed, leadoff hitter, is in center field. Uh, Gabe True. Gabe is a is a an outfielder slash pitcher uh, has improved tremendously. Again, this is a kid that that didn't miss all winter long. Uh, he hadn't had a lot of lot of uh, playing time right now. Has thrown quite a bit, but he's gradually going to be working himself in the lineup because does a great job. Um, Brandon Webster. Brandon again is a kid that is playing both ways right now as a junior. He's got a good arm. Uh, Either infield, he can catch, but he can also pitch a little bit. And I believe that is it. 
Right. That's yeah. a that's a great roster, though. I mean, you know, and you just mentioned so many players there that are first and second year players. That's how a program gets back going, and it shows you know what really how this program can get going back to where it has been in the past. Well, and that's it. It just shows the interest is there. The kids want to be there. We're hoping that we'll have more and more guys that, uh, again, being a school our size, Madison size, uh, 3A, small 3A, um, in, in all the area schools, we got kids that ought to be playing multiple more multiple sports. Um, back when I was in school, you know, we played three, four sports. You know, you, you have to be, and it's not just about so many kids want to be a one sport athlete now. Every college coach I've ever talked to like two or more sport athletes. Not that they're going to play that in college, but but it keeps them active, keeps them, um, you know, able to do other things. And, and, you know, we've got so many good athletes in other sports that could, you know, our, our baseball players could help out football, could help out ba basketball, could help out soccer, whatever it may be, tennis, and vice versa. So we should have more kids coming out and helping out other sports because it's about helping your school. Well, and you know, Ray Black, when I when I interview him, one thing he and I always talk about, we talk about Ray Lewis, who of course is the great linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. He, um, of course, recently retired, won a couple of Super Bowls, but he was a state champion in other sports when he was in high school, and he talked about how great it was and how it helped him become even a better athlete athlete in football by yeah. doing other sports. And most, most of your really uh, standout athletes are. I mean, I go back to the 99 team that won state championship, 98 guys. And incidentally, those guys are just fabulous with, with our players. Of course, Coach Mahoney and Coach Jenner were on that on that team and and they have just a the relationship that they have with one another they're they're all facebook friends they're always contacting texting each other every day giving each other a hard time whatever it may be but last year uh that group got together and, and did a video and sent to our guys before the sectional about the importance of the program and what it means and what what they can do and and so on and and you know they just do a great job and our whole coaching staff again it it's our success is because of the people that we surround even coach o'neill you know he's still you know he still ought to be a head coach because he he doesn't go away he's always there i mean it's in his blood you know he's in driver he still teaches driver's ed but every day you know he's come by whistling at field and comes over and works with our guys and it's just fabulous to have people like that around and, and you know he's a great one of the best baseball lines you'll find too he really really is he's done broadcasts with me before and i could listen to him all day just talk about baseball I yeah really it was it was funny last saturday uh, we were supposed to play lanesville and lanesville's a, a great program won the state won a last year they moved up to a and we were supposed to play a double header with them unfortunately mother nature you know got us again and we we even had the tarp on the field but we're we're sitting over there and and we're in the press box uh coach's office now because the remodeling of the school that's going on right uh but anyway we're sitting in the coach box all the coaches and here comes oh sits up there and we're just talking about different situations and he is you talk about a great mind I mean, it, it really is special. And I've been, just incidentally, I've been very fortunate over the years to have people like that as, as mentors. You know, a guy that in 2000, we won actually won the state uh, championship at the American Legion level, and Coach Delbert Leiter, he was there, uh, and Bobby Kring. Uh, you know, a, a great guy, and we miss him dearly uh, not being around because Mr. Fungo was, you know, <laughs> he always had the bat in his hand. And, and when I first started in coaching, I was a young man and worked for the Parks Department. I was in high school and, and had my first Pony League at the time or Babe Ruth uh, team in the park system. And I'll never forget Mr. Kareem coming over, and, and we had a cooler – Pepsi's one day because he drank Pepsi's he didn't drink coke we had a cooler <laughs> Pepsi's one day I had my team over there and we sat down in the outfield and went through every situation for about two hours every situation in baseball so that's you know that's the type of people that I was around that that taught me the game and and that's what we want to do is try to give back uh, you know he uh, he was coaching he was helping you and coach Forner out at Shaw uh, before we lost him and uh, one of my friends who was a senior uh, the last year he coached at Shaw was a senior and I just remember talking to him and he was he was so devastated because he said just working with him the three years uh, just impacted him so much and it's uh, really sad that he's not around but man he taught so many people and he is dearly missed yeah he is he really is um, all right coach is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap this up 
No, I just appreciate everybody that, that has helped uh, me throughout my career and, and our programs, uh, no matter where it was at. And again, a big shout out to Coach Modis that uh, just, a, just does a fabulous job at, at our facility and, and the whole uh, Madison school system right now. Uh, things are on the, on the up all the way around. We've got good people in good places. Our athletic department is running very well. And, we just want to continue to get better. Excellent. Well, Coach, best of luck today in the MCIT final. Thank you.